Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fisher Brown Collins. It's going to be a fun one today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're talking more politics. So, yeah, every now and then on this channel, we do a political video, and then we kind of go back to reactions. We go back to uh, all the other crap that we do on this channel. Sorry, trying to reorganize my lights here. It's just like everything's changing in the frames for me, at least on my camera. Um, but today, we are going to be talking about none other than Candace Owens. Uh oh. Now, Candace Owens is a controversial figure. Why is she controversial? Because she said Christ is king. That is not allowed, Candace. You're not allowed to say these type of words. That is anti-Semitic. You bitch. No. <laughs> no. Um, Christ is king. That is the truth. And if my work wanted to fire me because I tweeted that, um, I'd be pretty pissed. But it's the truth. And uh, I guess this is proof that... Uh, the Daily Wire, her most her most uh, recent employer, I guess uh, they don't like that term because it's anti-Semitic. Oh, does that hurt your feelings, Ben Shapiro? <laughs> now, um, I'll be hundred percent honest. In the last couple years, I have not been the biggest supporter or the nicest to Candace Owens. I have been uh, kind of nasty towards her. And I have my reasons, and I will share with you my reasons. But I will also share with you why I've changed my mind. So, let's kind of go back. Okay, Candace Owens joins the Daily Wire in 2020. Awesome. Okay? That's probably around the time that I uh, discovered the Daily Wire, I think, as well. I don't really remember. Um, I only heard about the Daily Wire because of another content creator that we will get into. Um, but he had mentioned something about the Daily Wire and that he was close friends with people there and... He really supported all their, their stuff, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go check them out. And uh, 2020 is kind of the time when I got into politics. <sighs> Almost a mistake, honestly. Sometimes I regret it because I've lost many friends and family due to my political views. It's uh, not always fun, so... If you can, not that I want to silence anybody, but keep your political views to yourself sometimes. If you feel like it's going to ruin your relationships, don't talk about it. I've learned from my mistakes, and unfortunately I would never mend those friendships, those the family relationship that I had. Um, with, you know, politically and religiously, I screwed up a lot. But anyway, I guess, so she joined in 2020, The Daily Wire. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I actually, uh, I, I liked, I liked Candace Owens. One, um, I found her to be... Quite um, attractive, to be honest. Um, as someone who has gone down the dark road, you know the old saying: "Once you go black, you never go back." Um, I definitely got myself a taste for for the other for the other kind. <laughs> I, I I'm trying to make this weird and awkward on purpose. I hope you guys know this. Um, but yeah, 
I really enjoyed uh, her videos. I really did. And then... And then... The end happened. The person that I've been following a lot longer than Daily Wire... Came out with a video... Saying... They didn't mention the company's name, but they mentioned that a company had offered them the contract and that they were not going to sign it. And so this company ended up being Daily Wire. Daily Wire decided to say, hey, he just called us out, but he didn't. He didn't. He did not. I know that for sure. Okay? He never even said the Daily Wire's name. But, you know, Daily Wire decided to start some drama. And so, therefore, the drama between Daily Wire and Stephen Crowder happened. And within that drama, Candace Owens pitched in her fun ideas and uh, that's when my respect for Candace Owens started to go downwards uh, because I'm someone who highly enjoys the work of Steven Crowder and his show Louder with Crowder I'm not here to talk about the rumors or anything about that that have happened I'm just here to say the reason why I started to dislike Candace Owens was because of her high disrespect for Steven Crowder, a man that I actually respect, even to this day. Yeah, I don't always agree with everything he does. No, I do not agree, and I and I I think he should have not recorded his phone call between him and Jeremy Boring. I don't think that was appropriate, at least to leak it. It did make him look bad. And no, I do not endorse or, sorry, uh, I do not condone abuse or violence towards loved ones. Now, there is evidence that Steven Crowder was never this way towards his wife, which is another situation that Candace Owens got involved in, of course. Because she was sent video evidence that he was abusive. Yeah, he shouldn't have been yelling at his wife. But there was thousands of hours, hundreds of hours, and not included in that video. That was out of context. And Candace put her words in the public's mouth. And so everybody attacked Steven Crowder. Everybody attacked him. Not his wife. Not Jared. Not, not Jared. They attacked him. But again, this video is about Candace Owens. So, yada, yada, yada. All that blew over finally. Done. One day, Candace Owens started to speak out about funding Israel. Because Ben Shapiro, as we know, is a Jew. And we know what those Jews like. Money! No, I, I'm just joking. Um, they, uh, you know, what Ben Shapiro wants. He wants support for Israel. He's not an American first conservative. Candace, on the other hand, is. And that's where me and her would see eye to eye. America first. That is the only way. We cannot spend and waste our dimes and dollars to give to another country. It will hurt us in the end. It will put us even more billions of dollars in debt as a country and we will end up becoming the most poorest country and we don't want that 
That's why I'm all I'm an American first. America first American. Okay? Yeah, it's unfortunate the stuff that happened in Israel. But it doesn't it's just it's it's a it's a spicy topic, okay? But anyway, Candace spoke her mind. It pissed off Ben. Ben threatened and told her to quit. She wasn't going to quit. But weeks later, she posted a Bible verse. Pissed off Ben because it was about money. <laughs> and, and she ended her thing saying Christ is king. And then Jeremy Morin came out and said that Christ the king, Christ is king, is anti-Semitic. Okay. I, I mean, whatever, sure. Um, and then after that, um, she's fired. She got fired or let go. Um, Daily Wire has refused to talk about it. Ben Shapiro has refused to talk about it. Jeremy says that him and Ben did not fire her. That is very much a lie. I know it. They are t Those two are in high power to do that. They had to have. So, she got fired. And ultimately, that pissed me off. A company that I actually was supporting with my money is supposed to be standing for free speech. It's supposed to be standing for Americans. And then they go and fire a woman who, like I said, I have my disagreements with. But they go and fire her for saying something they disagreed with. Now, how is that free speech? How is that in support of free speech? It's not. Now, I don't understand this because there are others there at the Daily Wire who are America first. For example, Matt Walsh. He has not really said too much about the Israel, Ukraine, any of that stuff. Because I think he's he was smart and he stayed out of it. Same with Brett Cooper. She stayed out of it. But Matt Walsh, I, I know for a fact he is an America first American. And he probably has his disagreements with Ben. Because, you know, if your views don't align with Ben, you're practically out of there. So, yeah. <laughs> now, it really did make me sad. And it was just stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid situation. To, to fire someone over. And, but, you know, Candace has made made it on her own for a little while now. And, you know, there's more drama going on. Ben Shapiro is supposedly sending spies to spy on her at conferences and just other crab there now firing her, um, her old employees that were at the Daily Wire. They're now firing them for contacting her not even about work, not slandering anybody. I don't know. It's just, it's so much drama. And this, this is exactly what the left wants. The left wants to see the right argue. This is their plan. They want to see us fall together and argue. But we need to put a, put aside those petty little differences and unite together. Now, I'm never going to probably agree with Candace Owens on everything, and nor should you. We should all not be agreeing on everything, because if we all agreed on the same thing, that would be a cult. That would be, um, this would be there would be a lot of issues, okay? Be a lot of issues if we all agreed on everything. And uh, 
This is why we have the middle ground, you know, the moderate independents, independent people. Um, they're in the middle. They agree with both sides. Okay, I definitely lean more right than I do anywhere else. Definitely don't lean left really on any uh, uh, topic that I can think of. But um, but if that's why, I, but I don't consider myself a Republican. I consider myself just conservative. That's all, just conservative. I don't believe. I don't uh, put myself in a party. But anyway. Um, but yeah, Candace has been doing good, though, I think, for herself. And she finally has uploaded an episode. Her very first day back was yesterday, as in the day I'm recording this, uh, June 10th. She recorded her first episode back on YouTube. And we're going to check that out. So... Yeah, I apologize. This is going to be a bit of a longer episode here. And uh, let's just enjoy and see what she has to say. And uh, Candace, if you are watching this, I do want to apologize on, uh, because I have been rude on social media. I have uh, slandered you. Even when I was telling the truth, uh, I st still should not be so rude. And it was not right of me to do that. And I do humbly apologize. And all I ask is that you would humbly apologize to Steven Crowder. I ask that you would humbly apologize and make amends. Because Steven Crowder did not wrong you they did not wrong you you wronged him and it's time to apologize for that and that's all I ask okay all right let's get into this reaction okay it's a 37 minute episode and we're gonna see what Candace has been up to that's what uh, that's what it is. It's an update video, pretty much. Okay, so here we go. Come on, pick up, pick up. Yeah, what's up? Hey, yeah. Um, I had a quick question. Go ahead. So, do you know any good clothing brands that can help represent my love for Make America Great Again? It just seems. I always get called a rat. I always get called, oh, you're just one of them MAGA Republicans. Um, do, do you know a good clothing brand that I could use? Well, you're not going to be voting for Biden, right? No, I'm not going to vote for Biden. No, I want to be a MAGA. MAGA, 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 MAGA. Yeah, there's a clothing brand called MAGA Rats out there. Really? MAGA Rats? Yes, MAGA Rats. Well, tell me more about it. MAGA Rats is a conservative company made by hard times, and they're all about Make America Great Again. You don't say. Yeah, just go to MAGARATS.com and use coupon code Eagle Pass, and you get free shipping off your four servers. So all I have to do is go to MAGARATS.com and use coupon code Eagle Pass to get free shipping off my first order? Yes, that's all it takes. Just do that. And then you get free shipping. Well, by golly, that's like the most American thing I think I've heard all day. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to go check them out right now. Cool, cool, cool. Huh. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. All right, you have a good day. A brand that stands for freedom. A brand that stands for Make America Great Again. I'm all for that. I'm tired of getting called a MAGA rat. So I'm going to start using... That turn is a motivation for pride in my country. A pride that I believe America will be made great again. This is great. Huh. This is pretty awesome. So yeah. So if you're listening, head on over to magarats.com and use coupon code EaglePass to get free shipping. 
off your first order. That's pretty awesome. Hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I think that's all I have to say. Let's get back into the video. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. Okay, you know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Uh-oh, I got fired. Candace Show, episode one. Here we go. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally back. Yes, I am genuinely so excited. I can't even tell you guys how excited I am to finally be back with all of my friends just speaking about things that are on my mind. Genuinely, we have so much to catch up on. So much has taken place. What did I miss? The Daily Wire has parted ways or fired Candace Owens. The da that was Jeremy from the corner. Oh man, I like Jeremy, he's awesome. Daily Wire severs ties with Candace Owens. Candace Owens is fired. Was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? Jeremy, uh, the God King of the Daily Wire, announced that the Daily Wire and Candace Owens have parted ways. The God King of the Daily Wire? Yo, what? Now, I've never been a big fan of Andrew Kilfan. Um, he just kind of always rubbed me the wrong way. And uh, I know he's been... Very, very rude towards Candace. So, L for him. Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Got to ask you about the recent departure of Candace Owens. Justifying why he fired Candace. Like, look what's going on with Candace Owens and I, Ben Shapiro. I want to know what was she, what she was fired for. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, apparently I missed a lot. Welcome back, guys, and this time, it's just Candace. So obviously we have to address the elephant in the room. It would be so inauthentic, it would be so not Candace if we did not address the elephant in the room. And there's really just no way that we can pick up where we just left off, you know what I mean? We, we can't avoid it. The answer is yes. President Joe Biden did, in fact, poop his pants in France the other day. Everyone knows. <laughs> that is true. He did. He did. A lot of people are like, no, he didn't. He, come on. He literally took a squat while he was standing. He took a squat and was just like, ugh. <laughs> knows he pooped his pants you know he pooped his pants i know he pooped his pants right but especially there. us moms to toddlers <laughs> we know what went down it's an unmistakable undeniable squat oh, i think the most telling part was it was jill biden's face jill biden looked over at her toddler and she just looked like a disappointed mommy yeah. she gave the you have got to be kidding me here now didn't i tell you to go to the bathroom before we got into the car but that, of course, is not the only elephant in the room. I kid, I kid, there is a much bigger one, and we will address that too. You know, for me, my podcast, I describe it as just talking to my friends on the phone. That's what it feels like. I don't even feel that the entire world is listening. I kind of am just like, hey, oh my gosh, did you see this? This is crazy. <gasps> I just read this crazy book. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest here. For some reason, this just puts a whole new light on Candace. She doesn't look like she is, you know, stuck up. She's not wearing, like, you know, a fancy dress or a suit. She doesn't have, you know, a professional background or anything. This looks like... It's just... She looks comfy. She looks like she's at home. Like, not in her home, but you know what I mean. She's, like, she feels at home wherever she's filming. And she looks good. She looks good. Okay? She looks more comfortable here than she did at the Daily Wire. Now, I don't know the... I don't know, obviously, the whole situation entirely. I don't think any of us really ever will until they release her uh, paper thing that she signed that she couldn't talk... You know, she's not allowed to talk about certain things. So stupid, a gag order or whatever. Or as Jeremy from the Cordine 
calls it a, a gag order. <laughs> oh, I had to throw that in there. But, um, no. She looks good. She looks good. She looks like she's happy. And that's what truly matters. Gosh, what does this mean about our government? It's corrupt. It's like talking to my family on the phone. And then we kind of sort of find out that the entire world is listening when all of these hit pieces are being written about me. And I'm like, oh, basically being spied on. Why is somebody listening to our private conversations? So, yeah, when I found out really kind of sort of definitely with the rest of the world that my show had been rather unceremoniously canceled, uh, it was upsetting. It, it sort of felt like you're talking on those old school cord phones late into the night and like your parents are sleeping and then you, you think they're sleeping and then suddenly your mom picks up and she's like, yeah, this conversation is ending right now and you're grounded for two weeks. It's over. Deeply, deeply upsetting. And I think also something that was strange is that when most people leave their jobs, they just sort of leave their jobs. It doesn't really become this global news story where everybody feels like they have to comment. Yeah, a worldwide Twitter trend for an entire week, crazy. And I wanna say this, I genuinely, my entire life, I believe that you should always aim to split amicably, whether that's in a relationship, whether you're in, in the midst of a, a divorce, which I, I hope never happens, um, or whether it's just leaving a job. I mean, why else would we put years in anywhere if you did not want that relationship to end amicably? You, that should always be the aim. I want you to know that wherever you are going, don't put in years somewhere and then have it be a messy split. And quite frankly, I also think it's the right thing professionally not to speak about why you are splitting or what's happened. But I was shocked, very shocked, and I'm sure you were shocked as well, when no sooner was the split announced than Andrew Clavin just was like, hey, it's me, I pick myself, I'm gonna be her crazy ex-boyfriend. It was like a bizarre tour he went on. He, he felt like it was his duty, or maybe somebody knighted him and said, you know what, Andrew Clavin, this is your duty to go around and to just smear Candace Owens, say whatever it is that you want about her. And there's a piece of this that everybody's missing, and I, I do want to talk about that. I think Lauren Chen some, really summed it up, or at least pointed to it on Twitter. She sort of said... Oh, I, like, I like Lauren. She's, she's pretty awesome. And, you know, smoking. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's awesome. ...said... You know, what's really missing in all of these conversations with Andrew Clavin is, are you guys recognizing that he he's basically saying she was really nice to him? That there was nothing that she did from a personality perspective. Yeah, that is kind of the big part that I think a lot of people are missing. Lauren Chen is correct. I was nothing but kind and nice and warm to Andrew Clavin for years. I had what I would describe as a very good working relationship with him, as I do with everybody. It's important to me to always represent myself professionally, also to always be nice and check in on people's lives. And just a few weeks before this, Andrew Clavin was sitting across from me on backstage at asking about my kids, asking us how I was doing, talking to him about the fact that I had had a surgery. I had been walking around in a boot just a little prior to that because I had a surgery back in December. And I think that that is just, I don't know, I don't even want to say it's strange, more than strange. I, I think it's, it's dishonorable. You know, a lot of people go, oh, why do all of these young men follow Tristan and Andrew Tate? Why don't they follow people like, I don't know, Andrew Clavin? And I've really spent a lot of time trying to understand how it is, and I think this was just recently announced, that someone like Andrew Tate uh, has become the third most Googled person in the world. That was recently announced. The third most Googled man in the world is Andrew Tate, uh, his brother. They are from the wrong side of the tracks. How do they gain a following of so many young men following them? I think that one thing I could bet my life on is that if me and Andrew Tate were enemies, he wouldn't be sitting across from me asking me how my kids are. He wouldn't. I also want to say that just in terms of how I've always behaved with my colleagues, if I ever had a disagreement with something that they said, I, I, I would never do anything other than to go to them directly. I would. I would not be holding on to anything. In fact, this is a true story. One time Matt Walsh tweeted something and I thought that he just didn't have all of the facts. I'm not even going to tell you what the situation was. It wasn't that important. I just called him and I was like, hey, saw your tweet. I think that you should talk to this person because I think there's something that you're missing. And Matt was like, oh, well, I'm not going to change your mind on this. And I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not asking you to change your mind. I just want to introduce another fact. And I got him on the phone with somebody else and they had a conversation. 
I don't even know what happened with that conversation, but that's just the way that I would expect colleagues to behave. But you would just raise something directly with the person that you are seeing on a day to day basis. But Andrew Clayman didn't do any of that. And what he said about me and the reason why I'm responding forcefully is because it rose to a level not just of tremendous dishonor to him as an individual, but also to blatant defamation. Andrew, he just lied. I know, it was, it was just such a weird thing for me to watch. He was lying with such gumption. And, and I'm going to show you guys how you really can sort of sniff out these sorts of lies in politics in general. And we're going to start by just cutting to Andrew. He, on his second appearance talking about me, because, you know, he really wanted me gone, but also can't stop talking about me, <laughs> appeared on a show called Cross Politic. And he was... That just reminds me of, uh, you know... Who is, for here, here's a question, who is the left, the Democrats, the liberals, who are they talking about the most? Donald Trump. It's because they are obsessed with Donald Trump. They are obsessed with him so much that they cannot get him out of their minds. If you watch The View which I don't recommend watching The View, but uh, I've, they're always talking about Trump this, Trump that. It's because they have something that uh, some of us um, YouTubers like to call TDS. And uh, it's uh, Trump, Trump deranged sy syndrome or something like that. Uh, I just probably butchered that delete that guys um <laughs> i'm not talking to anybody i'm just talking to myself over there <sighs> but uh <laughs> um <sighs> yeah the left is obsessed with trump and when you're consistently talking about somebody and consistently bashing somebody that means you are obsessed with them in a non-healthy way. And maybe this is exactly what Andrew Kovan was. He was obsessing over Candace Owens in a very unhealthy way. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's not always the case. But for the most part, I think that is the case. Just like if I was on here every single week talking about... Oh, did you did you see what this person did, huh? And then the next week I'm like, hey, they would they went and did this, you know. It's like that's just how it is, you know. Uh, whatever, right? <laughs> Stop being obsessive, people. Okay. I was explaining my alleged anti-Semitism. Take a listen. The Daily Wire parted ways with Candace Owens, and wow, that's terrible audio. Holy crap. Um, I hope that is not her audio, and that's just the audio she's taking from. But holy crap, that's not very good. Part of it was things that she was saying that we felt were strongly uh, anti-Semitic. And she was doing it in such a way that it was kind of hard to pin down, so I was trying to show where these things happen. Strongly anti-Semitic. But in a way that was difficult to catch. So what we're veering into here now, obviously, is just like Black Lives Matter, giving me definition definition of racism. It's 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 in a way that only people with expert eyes can see it. Otherwise, you would just throw up a clip and be like, wow, look at this crazy thing Candace said, how anti-Semitic. This guy's really a racist. He's just like dropping N-bombs. Like, obviously, this person is extremely racist. But when you get to this sort of like, it was done in a way, you just know that it doesn't exist. That they're just going to have to make it up. They gotta. That's like uh, taking, for example, Michael Knowles. He was recently on a podcast. I forget what it's called. It's like something to do with coffee. <laughs> and throughout the whole podcast, he was purposely saying the word gay. Uh, he kept he kept calling things gay. He's like, hey, this is gay. That's gay. And eventually, towards the end of the podcast, uh, they eventually called him out. And they're like, yo, why you keep saying this? Um, it's like you could take all those clips of Michael Knowles of him just saying that's gay and just you could paint him as a homophobic asshole if you if you if you personally wanted to do that. You can do anything on the internet nowadays. 
Uh, some of my videos have been clipped out of context before. I've gotten those videos taken down. Thank goodness. But, um, it's not because I don't believe, like, I believe in free speech. But when you're slandering and telling lies, it's a completely different story. Jesse Smollett it. You know what I mean? You just got to make it up. And guess what? Andrew does just that. He jumps into a Hitler hoax. By the way, let me explain to you what I mean when I say a Hitler hoax. We live in 2024, okay? If somebody ever comes to you and says, like, I don't know, I'm a black person, and somebody tied a noose and left it around my neck, that's probably a hoax. It's just people are not tying nooses in 2024, and it just reeks of a hoax. For Unless you're a cowboy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Or a Jewish person, Andrew, Andrew is racially Jewish. If they're trying to sell to you that someone just like jumped up on stage and started being like, yes, I love Hitler, or like, you know, this person was just glorifying Hitler, you're probably being lied to 99.9% .9 of the time. It's a lie. And they do it because they have built up Adolf Hitler in, in our school books. They know that we instantly just recoil when we hear, oh, my God, this person is supporting Hitler. So Andrew just jumps right into a Hitler hoax. And here is what he says, or at least what he says that I said. Take a listen. But when you start saying things like some of those books Hitler burned were so bad, you know, I, I was shocked. This is something Kansas actually said. I was surprised to learn that the books Hitler was burning or the Nazis were burning. They weren't they weren't good books. They were bad books. They were socialist books. Andrew, my friend. Andrew, my former colleague, I don't I just don't know how you can do that. I just am I broken? Like I I don't have the ability to to lie like that. How could you believe that I got on my platform and I was just like, yeah, no, Adolf Hitler, like when he was burning books, it was great. I just thought it would be totally fine for me to do that. Of course, that's not what happened at all. Actually, I wasn't even talking about Adolf Hitler. It was an episode that I was doing on psychology, and I was talking about how a lot of the people that have brought forth modern ideas of psychology were perverts. And I had listed three Christians among those psychologists. And the psychologist he's referring to is Magnus Hirschfeld. He happens to be Jewish, but that wasn't important to me. I was just talking about psychology. It was no more important than the Christians I had mentioned on that episode. Didn't need to mention that they were Christian, just the fact that they were perverts. And so what he's doing here is he's actually defending a pervert, Magnus Hirschfeld, by pretending that he is Adolf Hitler and that I said, oh my gosh, it's so great that his books were burned. No, I just introduced a fact an actual fact that lives on the Holocaust Museum website. It yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great point. Um, like, like I'll be completely honest. I've seen the paintings that uh, Hitler has painted. He was a really good artist, but you know I'm not going to go out of my way and go buy a painting by Hitler. <laughs> I'm. Um, even though he was a fantastic artist, I'm I'm not gonna go do that. I'm not gonna go out of my way and buy a, a copy of his book Mein Kampf. Definitely not. I've heard, I haven't really heard too much about the book because I don't know nobody that's read it. But uh, but I know the painting thing was just something that came to my mind when she was saying that. I don't know. I'm I'm rambling a lot. This might, we might get through this video in a while. Uh, she keeps making really good points. See, I'm back on the Candace train, guys. I knew it was coming at some point. It's a fact that Magnus Hirschfeld's Sex Institute was burned to the ground by student protesters. Literal fact from the Holocaust Museum website. And here's what I actually said thereafter. In my view, He's a pervert. Doesn't mean that his library or his institute should have been burned down. There's no excuse for burning down an institute. There it is, you guys. Does that sound like someone who's supporting the, the burning of books in any capacity? No. And that's, that's why he never showed the clip, of course. Am I supposed to believe that he didn't have access to the clips and the statements that I made at the Daily Wire? That he's not subjected to the same fact-checking process that I was subjected to every day that I was at the Daily Wire? That he just couldn't find out what it was that I actually said? Of course he could. 
He just wanted to lie and he wanted to smear me. And I think that that is... And it's because he... I mean, I'm probably... She might even say this. I don't know. But when when a big... When a big star or a big YouTuber, they say things and they don't actually have evidence to back up what they're saying. Um, and they don't actually show the clip or whatever. It's because they think... Oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, random yawn. Okay. Um, it just... It just makes them look bad because it, they are pretty much thinking that their audience is so dumb that, they, that they're not going to look up anything. But unfortunately, that's not the truth. In this situation, of course, uh, Candace is, you know, fixing the damage that Andrew started. Awful. It looks really awful. So what is it that I did that actually upset Andrew Clavin? That was kind of what I do. I'm going, I've had such a great relationship with this guy. What did I do to deserve this? I would never do this to him or any person. What did I do that amounted to him planning an attack on me and smearing my name absent any clips, absent any context? And he kind of gives it away in the title of his episode because Christ really is king. And this, honestly, is just where things got a little bit disturbing for me. Andrew, for five entire months, had been seething, I mean, unbeknownst to me, never mentioned it to me, never when I saw him, over a tweet that I had sent last November where I shared a Bible verse. And I ended the Bible verse, here it is, take a look at it, by saying Christ is king. It's just a Bible verse, okay? You will mm -hmm. note that Nobody is tagged in this verse. This was not a response to any thread. It was a standalone tweet. But remember, Andrew is, is, is lying his face off, right? So he says, okay, this is the tweet that upset me. Now I'm just going to pretend that this tweet was delivered in a different way. And uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, this probably sounds super horrible and anti-Semitic, what I'm about to say, but Andrew is Jewish. I guess I didn't I thought he I didn't know he was actually Jewish and Ben is Jewish this this verse that she shared is from Matthew Jesus speaking it's the Beatitudes um, and pretty much if you look at it it's pretty much it says yeah no no man can serve two masters it's pretty much an anti-money verse okay anti-money and what did you like? Money. <laughs> Again, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a jokester. I gotta, I gotta push buttons because I gotta get canceled somehow. And here is how he lies. Again. The tr truth that hid wickedness that I thought was the most wicked truth to use was the truth that Christ is king. <laughs> you know... When you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro, that she used Christ as king in an argument with Ben Shapiro, where it obviously carried this weight. And so that's why I was addressing it. So there you have it. No, of course, I did not spit that phrase at a Jew. I just tweeted it all by itself. I did not use that phrase in an argument with a Jew. I just used that phrase at the end of a Bible verse because that's an appropriate time to use that phrase when I was calling for peace after actually somebody insulted me and called me faux sophisticated. And it was meant as nothing more than I'm calling for peace. That's it. Christ is king of my heart. I don't need this drama because you remember I was 38 weeks pregnant. And so obviously the world responded because I guess Andrew thought it was such a brilliant idea to launch this attack on Christian doctrine <laughs> during Easter week and, and people didn't like it. They didn't like it. And I just want to say I am so grateful to all of you who defended me and said how wrong this was, what was happening, how it's just you just don't treat a colleague like this and uh, called out the sinister nature of what it was that he was doing. And he kept it up trying to justify it, doing interview after interview after people essentially revolted and said, how can you do this thing? By then veering into what I would call 
Hitler dog logic. They're like, what are you talking about? She said crisis. What is wrong with her saying crisis king? And he has an explanation. It's Hitler dog logic. Take a listen. <laughs> and there is a substantial coterie of people, anti-Semites, people who hate Jewish people, who are using Christ the King as what the left would call a dog whistle. And they use it to spit at people. There are pictures of Nick Fuentes, who is a raving anti-Semite, uh, shouting Christ the King in this kind of aggressive, uh, you know, pugilistic way to mean essentially uh, Jews are screwed. You know, that, that's basically what they're saying. So there you have it, you guys. Uh, Candace didn't actually say anything, uh, but this person, Nick Fuentes, also said Christ is King years before Candace. And apparently Andrew Clavin thinks that Nick Fuentes wrote the New Testament. And so anytime you are going to use Christ is King, Jesus is King, you be sure that you recognize this Hitler dog logic. Did you, do you have a dog? Do you guys have a dog? Did you know that Hitler also had a dog? Have you disavowed Hitler today with your dog? Yeah, well, then that would make you a Hitler lover. That is straight up leftist logic. And I love how he attributes that to the left. He's like, well, you know, the left would call this a dog whistle. Uh, yeah, no, uh, apparently the woke right would call that a dog whistle as well. A Hitler dog. Ooh, I like that. I like that. The woke right. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm going to take that back a second. The woke right. I like that. That's some gold right there. Time you are going to use Christ as King, Jesus as King. You be sure that you recognize this Hitler dog logic. Did you? Do you have a dog? Do you guys have a dog? Did you know that Hitler also had a dog? Have you disavowed Hitler today with your dog? Yeah. Well, then that would make you a Hitler lover. That is straight up leftist logic. And I love how he attributes that to the left. He's like, well, you know, the left would call this a dog whistle. Uh, yeah, no, uh, apparently the woke right would call that a dog whistle as well, a Hitler dog whistle. You're just basically attaching me to someone for absolutely no reason throughout multiple interviews for no other reason than the fact that you personally have issues with that person because of the way that they have attacked you. It is ridiculous, but you know what? In the scheme of all of this, I can't even be that upset with Andrew because, I, I, again, I think he attacked himself in the process. He showed his own character. As he was trying to attack mine, he revealed his own character. That is so good. That is so good. The woke right. I love that. I love that. I'm going to start using that term. That is so good. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I've never heard anybody say that before. And I love it. Okay. I have to save that in my phone. Let's continue, though. But you have to ask yourself, what gave Andrew the courage to lie so belligerently? Other than the fact that, by the way, the, the person in charge of fact-checking at the Daily Wire, the general counsel, is, is a son-in-law. So I think that probably helped it get through the fact-checks. Um, his married to Andrew's son. But what else gave him the courage? Well, what was it that Kanye was saying about the contracts? He must have known that I couldn't reply. He must have felt comfortable knowing that I could not say anything to defend my own name and my own honor, but he tripped into something different when he started lying on me in a way that rose to the level of defamation. And so I can defend myself against you, Andrew. I can defend myself against you. And genuinely do not wish bad on you still because I don't want that on my heart. I don't want venge vengeance and hate on my heart. I wish you all the goodness in the world. In fact, what I wish upon you is a sacrament of confession for doing something with such thoughts to, to plot for that long, for months, with, it's just, defies, it genuinely, it just defies belief with me. I could never do that. I would just go speak to my colleague. And here's what I will say, always in my life, when things like this happen, there is always a reason. And it is because it inspires me. It inspires me to be great. It inspires me to be greater than I had been. And it inspires me to win against people that are doing bad. And so we decided to have some fun. So many of you guys sent me emails. It was just completely inundated with emails, people asking, how can we support you? And it's one thing to be like, hey, do you want a donation? It's another thing for us to be able to create a product 
which will help support this show in all the ways that it is growing, you guys. I am introducing Standis Cups, not to be confused with a Stanley Cup. The first one that I am going to sign is going to go to Andrew Clavin. On the front here, we have the show logo, and it says, Christ is King. Oh, God. And yes, indeed, the back <laughs> says, Woke Right Tears. Oh, no. I am telling you guys, these are all the rave, you're gonna to want to head to clubcandice.com. Oh, and when you buy one of these Standis cups, you support the show, you support us <laughs> being able to stay independent. And by the way, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna discontinue these. So this is the white one. We're gonna discontinue these every time we hit the next million subscribers. So right now, I think, what are we at? Like 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube. When we get to 2 million, this gets discontinued and we're gonna create another Standis Cup and you're gonna have to collect them all as we climb back up to the following that I had. I think we were close to- Yo, yo, yo. $60? Come on, Candace. $60? <laughs> Goodness gracious. And I gotta wait till fall to get it? Oh boy. Um, $60. That is, that's kind of hefty for a, for a, a mug. Jeez Louise. Can I, uh... Ooh, can I do payment methods? Let's see, will it allow me to? No. Okay. I'll figure it out later. $60 though? Not a fan of the price, but it's because I'm kind of a cheapskate. But uh, anyway. Cool. To 4 million subscribers. It's okay. We can rebuild. They get to keep that channel. We get to build this channel, and it's all going to be great. So I really do want to thank Andrew Clavin for the inspiration to launch the Standis Cups. So many things you can do. It would stand us any temperature. If you have a disagreement with somebody, and you want them to understand this you, these cups are going to be absolutely amazing. Not to be confused with Stanley Cups. Those are those are basic, those are backwards, those are wrong. Head to clubcandice.com, support the show. And again, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for every tweet, every Instagram post. I saw it all. I Yo, okay. Candace, if you're watching this. If you're watching my review of this or reaction, um, I'm, I'm really interested in getting one of these. I will totally do like an ad thing, Majig. Okay, I will. I'll do an ad um, sponsor. Okay, I will. I will totally do that if you give me one. <laughs> I love it. I'm just now, I'm all of a sudden obsessed with this whole saying, the woke right. I love it so much. I mean, I just, I mean, while, you, while she was talking, I decided to tweet it out or X, X post it out. Whatever. Love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. I feel like a fangirl right now. Jeez, guys, I didn't think I was going to be back on the Candace train. That's crazy. Okay. I saw it all and genuinely would not be sitting in this chair if it wasn't for all of you who were supporting me from the very beginning of this. And ladies and gentlemen, that really is all I'm going to say about that if my crazy ex-boyfriend, Andrew Clavin, can keep his mouth shut. All right, guys, we're about to get into some stories, but I want to remind you guys to subscribe to this YouTube channel because this is the new YouTube channel. They're keeping the old one. That's okay. We can rebuild. Also, amazingly... Go unsubscribe from the old channel. Okay, screw Daily Wire. Unfortunately, I have to wait for my subscription to end with them. But, whatever. <laughs> I, I bought a subscription. This was before Candace was fired, of course. You know, because, whatever. Um, it's funny how when I purchase something and then it changes... Of course, I didn't purchase it to watch Candace. Uh, I purchased it to watch the What is a Woman documentary. And then I checked out a few of Matt's shows. I, I, I like Matt Walsh, okay? I like I like Matt Walsh. Not with, don't agree with everything he says. But. And then, of course, I used to be a big Brett Cooper supporter. 
Then she got freaking married and ruined everything. No, um, sorry. Anyway, let's let's continue on with this. We are available on Spotify. We're available on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you listen, we are probably available. I want to thank all of my supporters on Locals.com. Is she on Rumble, though? No. (laughs) I could not have done this, literally could not have done this without your basically investment in me and in the studio. I feel so blessed. Let's get into some stories. I think we're going to end it off here. Um, I just wanted to hear her side of everything. I don't think she goes into... um, I really don't know if she goes into the rest of like the Daily Wire drama. Um, unless, Unless I should continue on with this i don't know um you know i might just leave it there this video has been pretty long but uh yeah guys candace owens is back i'm back on the candace train it's kind of weird weird to say that but uh guys this has been fun um daily wire is a train wreck so get off that train and jump on to the Candace train, okay? Now, this might uh, cause some tension between me and the louder crowder guys, because uh, I've I've had conversations with some of them, and uh, obviously they're not fans of Candace, um, but, you know, whatever. doesn't matter. We don't all have to agree politically 100%. We're all going to have differences. Just like... I like the Daily Wire, but they've, every day they become more left-leaning. And I've, I've posted that before. I posted that on my X post. Um, check out my X profile, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I'm, a lot of people are still calling it Twitter, surprisingly. Because um, people don't like change. And uh, yeah, guys. Go subscribe to Candace Owens' new channel. This is awesome. And uh, already has about yeah 1.65 subscribers. That's awesome. That's awesome. I subscribed while we were watching. Um, this video is pretty good. Pretty, pretty ratioed. Good. I mean, yeah, 100, 101,000 likes. That's great. 3,500 dislikes. That's probably bots that Ben Shapiro... But he bought bots. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, I really, really like this. Um, especially that new term I'm going to start using. The woke right. I love it so much. Wow. Okay. And come in, Candace, if you're watching this video, contact me. I want to do an ad sponsor for your cups. I want to... I want to start a professional relationship here, okay? And just erase everything that I've said said negatively about you. Um, I mean, I'm still a little better about the whole uh, Steven Crowder situation, but we can both get over it. Um, I know I'm a forgive-forget kind of guy. One Christian to another. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk, Candace. Okay, let's talk. Now, uh, the rest of you that are watching this, what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. I uh, want to hear what you guys have to think and say. And remember, free speech matters. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And if you uh, remember to, <laughs> wow, I almost messed up my outro again. Did that in my last video. Okay, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and to click that bell so you can stay up to date with my content whenever I upload. I'm trying to upload more frequently, as you guys have seen lately. Uh, I've been I've uploaded a little over a week now, every day. I'm trying to keep that consistency. So, yeah, I really just hope that I continue to do that properly. The more content I get out, the more noticeable I'll be, apparently. So, 
But uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, we have a merch page. If you can't afford a merch, we have a cash app, send a dollar to. Anything helps. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks very much. And remember to stay comical and classy. Don't be a woke right guy. Right woke, sir. Don't be a right woke, sir. I'm going to work on that, okay? Yeah, stay calm and classy. Take care.